Hi Battle Bays and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Andrea Siobhan and I'm currently a specialist in the United States Army. I want to first start off saying I hope you guys are doing okay. You're staying safe and you're staying healthy and I seriously mean that. It's really scary out here and the unknown and the unpredictableness of everything that's going on is making it that much more frightening. So I hope you guys are really taking care of yourself mentally and physically because it is really important, especially in times like this. So continue to wash your hands, continue to practice good hygiene, keep your distance from other people and let's slow this spread. So I did promise my battle base an update on my AIT experience and switching over to 68 Charlie and just my life being back in AIT. So here is my first update. So far phase one has been really rocky due to COVID trying to adapt to this whole ordeal because as we know I am still at work all day every day. I know some units are doing it where they're working either half days or alternating shifts but not trainees and especially with us training for the medical field and nurses at that they want to get us trained so they can push us out as soon as they can so we can get on the floor and start working especially with this pandemic going on a lot of us can't wait to get out there and help so it's definitely been stressful chaotic and all over the place so far we've taken two tests and i did pass both of those and i am currently studying for our third which is monday and it's over the skeletal system and segmentary system muscular system and a few other things that i can't think about right now on the top of my head but just know your girl been studying <laughs> that's honestly why this video is not going to be that long because there is a lot of material that you have to go over study for and understand and i want to study tonight because i want want to pass these freaking tests the first time I take them and because of that I think I am finally getting into a pretty good studying habit routine type of thing it's kind of like a two-part while I'm at the schoolhouse the things that I do there and then when I come home the things that I do here and on test days my schedule and routine is completely different all together it's like a little ritual that I do that just helps me out and it kind of calms my nerves on test days. I haven't been in the course that long. No, I'm only on my third test, but from what I see right now and the scheduling and stuff like that, we're gonna be going over a lot of human anatomy and physiology, physio, physiology, <laughs> human anatomy and physiology here in first phase, as well as basic nursing, the nursing processes and stuff like that. And so I am so, so glad I, I took an attempt on human anatomy and physiology. Fizzy, why can't I talk right now? My tongue is so dry. Physio, physiology, physi, anatomy and physio, fuck. <laughs> My mouth is dry. I bought a Keurig today. So I made a homemade white chocolate mocha with vanilla. So I made it a little sweet, but it's fine. Anyways, where was I at? We are definitely going over a lot of anatomy and physiology as well as basic nursing and the nursing processes. And as I was trying to say earlier before my tongue decided to embarrass me is I am so glad that I even attempted at anatomy and physiology last semester because a lot of this stuff is just a refresher. So even if I don't know it right then, when I hear certain terms, it kind of like jogs my memory and I'm kind of on the right track. So I'm really understanding things a little bit more than if I did not have any type of exposure to it whatsoever. So a quick tidbit is if you want to do this course or you're thinking about coming over to 68 Charlie, I would start studying my medical terminology as well as just a little bit of anatomy and physio physiology just get a little bit familiar with it I definitely wish some of the more difficult subjects we had an actual instructor in the classroom because a lot of our stuff right now is basically like teleconference you're just listening to the person and give the lecture you're able to ask questions and stuff like that but we're often having technical difficulties so sometimes we just don't even want to say or touch anything because we don't want to like disrupt the line or however that stuff is working and honestly that has no bearing on our instructors whatsoever with this whole adapt adaptation everyone has to adapt to what's going on right now in the world and I think they're doing a very good job because they have a whole different set of instructions that they're getting so they say the students can't be within six feet of each other but we only have so many classrooms where the seats are literally right next to each other so then they have to put something in place where we're still able to move on with our training but we're abiding by what 
higher is wanting us to do and what CDC is telling everybody that they need to do. We get the curriculum, you know, we, we got what we need to study, so we're, we're getting the right information and stuff like that. I just wish we weren't in this situation because it's, it's just making things a little bit more stressful. <laughs> so again, I won't lie, it's definitely been a bit stressful in the course so far, but it's sad because it's not even the course. It's not even like the work. The work isn't the hard part. It's the situation we're all in. <laughs> That's making everything harder. A few of the things that I do not like about the program so far, and I don't know how much I can say because I did sign a counseling and I know I read some social media part. I don't think this is talking bad about them, right? I'm just giving my experience. Anyway. So I don't like the fact that they did not have a real in-processing system. From what we did, the only thing we did is we went to a building, we gave our finance papers. So we were able to at least close out our travel vouchers. But when it came to anything else, like needing to go to finance for other reasons, needing to go to transportation, needing to go to S1 to do whatever, we did not get a chance to actually in-process. We came in, we turned our paper then for finance, and then we were in class. So when it came to handling our business, the first week we were here, we did not eat lunch because we are handling all that stuff on our lunch because we just didn't have time to do it any other time, especially if class starts at eight in the morning, you have lunch that's about an hour and sometimes class goes over so we barely even get that hour and class ends after 1700 sometimes way after 1700 depending on if they're we're just sitting there waiting to see if we can get released or not so we just didn't have time to do anything the second thing that i do not like child care has been a very big issue for me my little sister is living with me because of this reason but the problem that i have now is my sister was supposed to be watching my kids for PT hours because they don't offer childcare for PT hours for whatever reason. I do not, un I don't know, I don't understand it, but okay. I found a way, my sister is living with me and I get here and because of COVID, I was told that I could not get childcare at all. What I was told is they are taking essential soldiers in and a civilian and a civilian DOD employees or something like that that still have to go to work now here's my issue I'm an AIT student so I still have to go to work I'm training for the medical field they still said that I couldn't get child care until I had to talk to a few different people and kind of complain only for them to say oh well you need a memo to enroll your kids so we can see that you actually do have to go to work and i just never got the memo because i guess the commander forgot about giving it to me so i just never got it so my kids aren't in daycare and i got an email saying that they lost their slots so it's not even like they can go to daycare if i got the memo at this point so that's another thing that i do not like at all because i just feel bad because my sister is 19. even though she's okay right now she doesn't mind is she really gonna be okay in a year? You know, cause this isn't something that we agreed to. I understand nobody under nobody expected COVID to happen, but you know, people have their own lives. People do have their own lives. So kind of worried, but we'll see. One of the prior service that I got here with that bought her child with her, she already had to get out on a chapter eight because of it. And the second one is actually about to have to do the exact same thing. And it's all because of the way this program is. In my opinion, I don't think you should be allowed to bring your kids because it's not it, it's not gonna work. You shouldn't be allowed to bring your kids. It's not gonna work. And for us to have re-enlisted for this job back in 2018, turning down rank, one of my battles is threatened with demotion so she can stay in this course. The one that got out gave up her six so she can get in this course. We gave up so much only to get here and our careers are ending. So it's kind of fun, right? <laughs> but again, I don't want to say too much. I don't know if I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But maybe I'll be able to say a little bit more of how I'm feeling about this program. So to be continued. <laughs> 
if you want to see more videos from me or if you want to follow my journey to 68 charlie make sure you subscribe and also follow me on my other social media handlings and if you are not busy i will recommend that you click on one of those videos you see here on the screen right now i'm positive you will find them very interesting and helpful and i will see you in the next video bye